of God's Church of Love online, reading Isaiah chapter 60, starting at verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Let me stop there just for a second. You ever notice how, <laughs> this is crazy, the darker anything is, the darker the night, the darker the street, the darker the location, a little light can seem so bright because of the darkness in comparison to the darkness. Well, that's the way God's light is, and his is the brightest of all. He says, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness basically is saying, shall cover the people. But the Lord, he is our light. The Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Just like Jeanette said when she walked in the room and the man said, who is this woman, right? Because he saw the glory of God on her. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to thy brightness of thy rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves. I just feel led to say this. Vivi Ada, I believe God is telling me to tell you right now, lift up your eyes round about and see, baby. Lift up your eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy son shall come from far and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then shalt thou see and flow together in thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, and they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaoth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Listen, you guys, be encouraged. Be encouraged. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that the kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdoms that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree and the pine tree and the box tree, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Oh, my goodness. The sons also of them that afflicted thee ha, shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shalt suck the breast of kings, and thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. For brass, I will bring gold. For iron, I will bring silver, 
and for wood brass, and for stones iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thy exactors righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for the brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. Hmm. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light in the days of thy mourning, Divina, shall be ended. Thy people also shall be all righteousness. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Peter, a little one shall become a thousand. Rashad, and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Ha! You guys be encouraged. I don't care what it looks like right now. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how dark it feels, how dark it seems, how dark it quacks, waddles, and, and whatever. It is all daylight for you, baby. God will not leave you groping in the dark because he is our light. He is our light when he tells us to arise, shine, for our light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. That's something to thank God for. That's a proclamation straight from him to us. We don't have to worry about being subject to the elements of what's happening in these times. Because God is our stay. God is our rock. God is our foundation. God is our tower high. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Psalms 46, y'all. Be encouraged. God has us. God's got us right in the palm of his hand. He says, no man can snatch us out of his grip. Nobody can. Nothing and nobody. We can walk out of his grip by will, but no one can take us, not even the devil from hell, because God is all powerful. He's the head one in charge, y'all. Don't you forget that. No, no evil is in charge. They may think they're in charge. You know, they, they're given a little position here on this planet, but we have the same authority Jesus had. Why? Because Jesus in us, is in us, and we're calling on the power of his name. Hello. All right. So let's go on. Let's go to Psalms 105. I want y'all to be encouraged. Psalms 105. Verse 1 through 7, I believe. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Listen, every chance you get, just like Jeanette, you know, Jeanette, she yak, 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 yak. That girl gives God glory all the time, y'all. Every chance she gets, she's trying to give God glory. She's trying to witness for the Lord. She's trying to win souls. All of us should be doing that every chance we get. Anytime I talk to anybody and they talk about, oh, you, you have a two-story house, then they got to stand there and be my captive audience because I'm going to tell them how God worked that miracle. I make sure I give my testimonies because everything in my life is a miracle, y'all. And I want everybody to know how good God is. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Question. When was the last time you sang a song to the Lord? When was the last time you serenaded him? The last time you sang a love song to him? You worshiped and praised him in melody. When was the last time you did that? Mmm. -hmm. Glory ye in his holy name. 
Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and his judgments of his mouth. O oh, ye seed of Abraham, his servants, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Excuse me. Verse uh, 8, I'm going on. He hath remembered, he hasn't forgotten. Check that out. He has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. And confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Saying, verse 11. Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan. The lot of your inheritance. Listen, you guys, be encouraged. You have an inheritance in God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, Davina. There comes a point where God will give you a scripture saying your warfare is accomplished. The fight is over. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. It is finished. The end of the conquest. It is finished. And Jesus is Lord. No matter what is going on, no matter how Satan tries to discourage you, no matter how Satan tries to bring you down and tries to draw some tears out your eyes, even when the tears come, because we react. Why? Because we're human. But even when the tears are coming down, remember how good God is. Remember who God is, because he will keep you in perfect peace when you keep your mind stayed on him. You won't be all torn up and chewed up inside. Why? God's got you. God's got you. He, he's got his hold on you. Remember that old rock and roll love song? You really got a hold on me. God's got a hold on us that nobody can break loose. You hear me? But no matter what, God has got you. God has got every detail, every disappointment, everything that falls through. When I make a poor decision, thinking I got permission from God, and things start going helter-skelter, the first thing I say is, Lord, you promised that to the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. Well, Lord, I've done my best to be merciful. I'm asking you to clean up the mess I made. I'm asking you for your highest level of mercy. Clean up my mess, please, Lord. I'm sorry I made the mess, but I'm still asking you to be merciful enough to clean it up. Take responsibility, but don't hesitate to ask for his help. Don't hesitate to ask God to rescue you. He's a very present help. You have to remember that. He loves coming to our rescue. He loves helping us. He loves meeting our needs. You hear me? Listen, I was, last week after we preached, you know, Saturday service, it wasn't that great of a message, but when I was trying to, uh, when I finished uploading it, it was still playing on one of the parts of the computer. And I was falling asleep because I was so tired by the time it got up on YouTube. I was dozing off. And while I was dozing off, I mean, I actually fell asleep. I was slumped over in the chair here, right, sitting right here. And I had a dream. In the dream, I could hear this female voice way in the background. And I couldn't remember understanding what the voice was saying, except when I got to a certain point in the message and I recognized, oh, that's the message I had preached. But in the dream, I didn't recognize it. I didn't recognize it till I woke up. But this is what was so beautiful, y'all. In the dream, the voice was yak, 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 and that was my mouth was going. And I couldn't make out everything. But I knew that something that was being said was moving me 
to feeling grateful towards the Lord for what he had been in my life. And I think I was sharing testimonies at that time of the message. And when it was playing back, it started stirring up my emotions. These were what they were, they were welling up in me. And the tears started to fill my eyes. And I started sobbing, but I knew that there was a recording going on, so I didn't want the recording to pick my voice up as I was crying. So I cried quietly, but I was crying hard. And I was, I was feeling so much gratefulness towards God for all he had done in my life while I was listening to the testimonial stories in that part of the message from last week. All of a sudden, check this out, in the dream, a hand goes on my head as if somebody's praying for me or blessing me. And a hand reaches from behind and wipes my tears from my eyes. I knew when I woke up, I knew that was the Lord. I knew it. I knew that was the Lord. God is so, in all his majestic splendor, in all his glory and power, he is so tender. He is so compassionate. And he knew that my tears were tears of joy. And it was almost like he took pleasure in catching one of those tears of mine. And I saw the hand come around my face and the finger gently wiped the tear from my eye. I, I, oh my goodness. When I woke up, I just thanked the Lord for touching me, for laying his hand on me. I just thanked the Lord for that personal moment, that personal touch. God is so attentive to everything that goes on in our hearts, even when we can't verbalize how we feel. In our moments of frustration, in your moments of fear, of anxiety, in your moments when you feel like throwing up your hands and just having a screaming hissy fit, God knows, he says, he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Why? Jesus died on the cross. He knows what pain feels like, y'all. We have a risen Savior. He is, he is a high priest. He knows what pain feels like. He knows what it feels like to be rejected. He knows how we feel. And he understands God feels our gratefulness. It's a form of worship to be that full of, of gratitude. We know that God could have wiped us off the face of the planet for some of the stuff we did with our lives. But his mercy, his mercy endures forever. His mercy is everlasting. Whatever you do, always fall on the mercy of the court, baby, because God is your judge, and God is a merciful judge. And if anybody will have compassion on you, if anyone will pardon you, it's God. Be encouraged, no matter where you are in your life right now. Work on getting it together if, it's, if you're having a shabby walk with the Lord. Work on getting it together if you don't care about reading his word or spending time with him. Tell God that and be honest. Ask him to put a hunger in your spirit. You can't manifest it. You can't, you can't manufacture it yourself. Only those drawn by the spirit of God can be drawn to him. Ask God to draw you by his spirit. Ask God to fill you with his spirit. Ask God to woo you, to touch you, to move on you. Whatever he's got to do to get you close to his bosom. There's nothing more beautiful. No man's love, no woman's love, no neighbor's love, 
no no accolades from a job, no amount of money can satisfy like the love of God. I'm telling you, once you experience him, you nothing else, everything else pales in his presence. Everything, everybody pales. As much as some of y'all like sex, baby, even that pales. Trust me when I say that. There is nothing on this planet that can outshine or upstage God. Nothing. No, nothing, no one, no entity that can outdo God. Hmm. God is something else. I'm telling you, I hope and pray that many of you, that some of these videos and some of these messages will make you want to get to know God and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering like we talked about last week. Get to know him. Get to know all the sides of him. He's multifaceted. Get to know him. Oh, my goodness. And one of the ways you'll get to know him is by reading his word. It's not just homework assignment just to get it over with. No, you start taking your time, reading slowly, and you'll start getting glimpses of his heart. You start getting glimpses of his character. Oh, that's the kind of God I serve. Oh, wow. It'll start, it'll build a fear in him, but it'll also build a, a love and an appreciation for his goodness. The goodness of the Lord leads us to repentance. The more you get to know his goodness, the more you get to know his heart, the more you want to live holy for him. The less you know him, the less you know his heart, the less you even care. That's why you got to get to know him personally. It will change you and your life, baby. Totally. I hope and pray that you choose, as the scripture says, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. I hope it's the same with you. Because there's nothing on this planet that can outdo him. You hear me? Nothing. Nobody that's more faithful, that's more dependable, nothing that can satisfy, that can light your spirit up like God can. Nothing that can screw your head on straight when you're going backwards. Nothing that can calm your nerves when you're rattling and bouncing off the chandeliers. Nothing can give you peace like God can. All the love you've been scratching your butt and digging for all over this world, no matter where you've been looking, you'll never find the love that you need except through God himself. And I hope and pray that you choose him above everyone else and everything else. I hope and pray that you experience him. I hope and pray that those of you who walk with the Lord, who are feeling discouraged because of everything going on, who have had family members pass away because of the big sea monster, all of this stuff, I really hope and pray that you don't blame God. It's the sins of this world and the sins of man and the freedom of choice God gave us. He doesn't want us to choose him because we have to. He wants us to choose him because we want to. And you wonder why everything goes bad, why bad things happen to good people, why people die young, why people get sick, why people suffer, why people do mean things to other people, why, they're cru why there's so much cruelty. Sin. Sin. That's what it is. It ain't God, baby. It's sin. So if you're going to blame anybody, blame sin, blame man, and blame the enemy. Because demons are being loosed in the atmosphere like crazy. You hear me? Like crazy. And the more the demons are being loosed, the more evil you're going to see. The freakier it's going to be, the weirder, the more bizarre it's going to get. That's right. But you don't have to take part in it. You don't have to be subject to it. You don't have to be affected by it. 
Put on Jesus Christ. Let him be your raincoat. Let him be your covering. And you have protection you never thought you could have walking with God. Amen? Be encouraged, all of you who are walking with God, who question where you are. Don't worry about it. God said he ain't going to forget his covenant. He'll remember it forever. Amen? When you said I do and God said I do, that bond cannot be broken except by you, not by him. You have to decide. You have to make choices to break that bond. God bless you. Be encouraged. Know that God sticks closer than a brother, baby. God's more faithful than your own mother. God will provide better than your father. God bless you. Amen.